Harvard, revoked his research grants, denied him tenure, and forced him to quit. And despite having a long pedigree from Harvard, it took him two more years to find another research job because, as he found out later, Harvard had blacklisted him. This is what happened to the scientists who disagreed. But if anything really drove it home to the rest of us, to the public, that we had to avoid saturated fat and heart disease to protect our hearts, it was this. Anybody my age or older, do you remember this cover? Remember that? The bad news, cholesterol, yes, it's true. Cholesterol is a killer, complete with bacon and eggs, making an unhappy face. The title of the article inside was, Cholesterol is proved deadly and our diet may never be the same. Our diet. Obviously, Time Magazine must have been reporting on the results of a major new diet study, right? Of course not. Time Magazine reached this conclusion because in 1984, for the first time, a cholesterol-lowering drug was shown to slightly reduce heart disease in men with genetically high cholesterol. And I say slightly reduced because of this. I looked up the original numbers. This was a study involving 3,000 men, half of whom were put on a new cholesterol-lowering drug called cholestyramine, the others, of course, on a placebo. After 10 years, here are the results. Men on the drug in that group, 30 heart attack deaths, 68 uh, total deaths. The placebo group, 38 heart attack deaths, 71 total deaths. Difference of eight among 3,000 men, if you run the math, which I did, it means the difference in the heart attack death rate between these two groups was slightly less than one half of one percent. In other words, if I took 200 men with genetically high cholesterol and I gave this drug for 10 years, this drug would have prevented one heart disease death. Now, if you want to see a really amazing, bad science leap in logic based on this result, here is what the lead investigator told Time Magazine. This study strongly indicates that the more you lower cholesterol and fat in your diet, the more you reduce your risk of heart disease. Do we see a problem with this? <coughs> Drug study somehow becomes diet? What happened was, at this point, the anti-fat hysterics were so desperate to save the lipid hypothesis, I kid you not, they invented a new form of analysis, and they called it teleoanalysis. And here's how it works. We cannot prove, despite years of trying, that A causes C. But, if we can prove that A is linked to B, and B is linked to C, we may still conclude that A causes C. Does that seem logical? Because if it does, I want to try it in some other situations here. <laughs> Excess water, we know, will produce frequent urination. Frequent urination is linked to diabetes. Therefore, <laughs> excess water will give you diabetes. <laughs> or I'll give you a more relevant example. Because what Time Magazine either didn't know or didn't report was that the first generation of cholesterol-lowering drugs were huge blocks. In the 1970s, there was a clinical trial of a uh, drug called clofibrate which did, in fact, lower cholesterol dramatically, but they had to stop that trial halfway through because the men taking it had a 47% higher death rate. So let's apply some teleoanalysis, shall we? Low-fat diets can lower cholesterol. In a clinical trial, lower cholesterol led to a higher death rate. Therefore, I say low-fat diets will kill you. My teleoanalysis is every bit as valid as theirs. But this is what they concluded. This is what we got from Time Magazine. This is the point where everybody just knew saturated fat was going to kill you. This is when snack wells came out and everybody was running out and filling up on the low-fat cookies and the fat-free cakes and the fat-free ice cream and the fat-free potato chips and pretzels. This is when schools decided they had to take whole milk off the menu. Everybody just knew this was bad. Remember what we saw earlier with the estrogen thing? People who have good health habits gravitate towards what they're told is good for them. They stay away from what they think is bad for them. And in doing that, they create false associations, right? In fact, if I could convince the media to cooperate with me and produce headlines like this, I can promise you within 10 years there would be an association between eating celery and some disease or another. Why? Because the health-conscious people would be avoiding it. So what effect do you think that had? That is why in some studies, there's been an association between saturated fat and heart disease. But we need to look at where saturated fat in the American diet comes from. According to the USDA, here are your top five sources. Do you see any potential confounding variables there? 
Pizza, grain-based desserts, you know, the piece of little Debbie Snap cakes, dairy desserts, are these the foods health-conscious people are going to eat a lot of? Of course not. Also, let's suppose that the people who told the McGovern Committee that the real problem with heart disease was sugar and white flour happened to be right. Wouldn't you say it's possible that in America, given this, the people who eat a lot of saturated fat are the same people who eat a lot of sugar and white flour? I think it's obvious that they do. The point is, if saturated fat were the problem, if it caused heart disease, we would see that result, again, consistently, repeatedly, around the world. But we don't. I'm sure you've all heard of the French paradox, right? Compared to Americans, the French consume twice as much saturated fat, including four times as much butter, three times as much pork, 60% more cheese. Their rate of heart disease is barely one-third of ours. And it has been fun watching the bad scientists try to just explain this black swan away with excuses like, it's because they drink so much red wine. Well, a little red wine may in fact be beneficial, but let, let's think this one through. The French are eating a, a diet that is supposed to induce heart disease. They smoke more than Americans do. Anybody who's been there knows that. We know smoking causes heart disease, and yet somehow, red wine magically offsets this entire heart disease-inducing lifestyle. If that's what's happening, next time you go to your doctor, just say, shut up about my diet and write me a prescription for red wine. <laughs> Back, make it a gallon, I'm having a barbecue with something. The other excuse they've come up with, kid you not, is the French actually do have a lot of heart disease. French doctors are just really bad at diagnosing it. I guess because they drink too much red wine. That's so. all I can think of. Well, unfortunately for the people spouting this nonsense, there is also a Swiss paradox. The Swiss have the second highest intake of saturated fat in the Western world. They also have the second lowest rate of heart disease. There is a Spanish paradox. In the last 30 years, saturated fat intake in Spain has gone up, while heart disease has continued going down. So I hope you are convinced by this point, part one of the lipid hypothesis is not true, certainly not consistent. Saturated fat is not causing heart disease. But now, that second part, we all know that's true, right? Everybody knows high cholesterol causes heart disease because all the experts say so. There is so much evidence that that is not true, I could spend an hour and a half just going through that, so I'm going to give you a couple of quick examples. Some years ago, the World Health Organization conducted a worldwide study of average cholesterol levels and rates of heart disease in many, many countries around the world. Now, if we were to take that data and plot it, if high cholesterol does heart cause heart disease, if we took the World Health Organization data, we should see this, right? Higher cholesterol equals higher, cholesterol, uh, higher heart disease. Well, I downloaded the World Health Organization data. I plugged it into Excel. I plotted it. And this is what it looks like. Does anybody there see a correlation? See this guy out here? That's Luxembourg. Average cholesterol in Luxembourg, 232. One of the lower rates of heart disease in the world. This out here is Venezuela, average cholesterol, 177, 45 points lower than in Luxembourg. Their rate of heart disease is nearly five times higher. This is Russia, average cholesterol, 189, wouldn't that make your doctor proud? Screamingly high rate of heart disease, second highest rate of heart disease in the world. And now here's the supposed magic number, 200. We have everything from very low rates of heart disease to the highest rate of heart disease in the world. Now, how anybody can look at that and still believe that, that high cholesterol causes heart disease is beyond me, and yet they do. And it's amazing the mental hoops they can jump through to hang on to that belief. I'm going to give you an example here. You might remember this because this was in the newspaper maybe a year, year and a half ago. Most heart attack, patient, uh, most heart attack patients' cholesterol levels did not indicate heart attack risk. What they meant by that was, it turns out that people with LDL cholesterol below 130 that's down there in the range the American Heart Association tells you you should be at, experienced 72.1% of, of all heart attacks. That immediately got me wondering, well, okay, what percent of the population are we talking about there? So I went looking for the data. I found it on the American Heart Association's website. It turns out that in America, 
People with LDL cholesterol below 130 make up 67% of the population, but as we just saw, they are experiencing 72.1% of the heart attacks, which means people here with the low cholesterol are having a slightly higher rate of heart disease than these people with the higher cholesterol. Now, let's suppose you are a researcher on this study. You already know the French and the Swiss have high cholesterol but low heart disease. You know the Russians and the Venezuelans have low cholesterol, screamingly high rates of heart disease. You've now just conducted a study and found out that in America, people with low cholesterol have a slightly higher rate of heart disease than people with high cholesterol. What would you conclude from that? A, maybe high cholesterol does not cause heart disease, or B, we need to set the cholesterol targets even lower. Well, that is, of course, the spin they put on it. Cholesterol must still be too high. I saw that, it just sent me into this head-slapping incident, thinking, okay, let me follow their thinking here. If these people with low cholesterol could push it even lower, then they'd have a lower rate of heart disease like these people who have higher cholesterol. And then if they push their cholesterol down even lower, they would finally have a really low rate of heart disease, like the French and the Swiss, who have high cholesterol. Does any of this make sense to anybody? Do you see anything scientific there? No, I think it's obvious that what this data tells us is that the lipid hypothesis is wrong. And what the recent research is showing is the heart disease does not begin because your cholesterol goes up. Heart disease begins when your coronary arteries become damaged or inflamed. When that happens, LDL cholesterol will show up to try to repair the damage. Why? Because that is exactly what LDL cholesterol is supposed to do. It is an important part of your body's repair system. Unfortunately, LDL cholesterol comes in different sized packages. It can be large and fluffy, or it can be small and dense. Large, fluffy cholesterol is not harmless. In fact, it appears to have antiviral and anti-inflammatory properties. Small, dense cholesterol can be a problem, because if small dense cholesterol shows up to repair your arteries, it can slip into the wall of the artery and get stuck there. And when that happens, it'll become rancid, it will oxidize, it will start to attract white blood cells, which will also get stuck back there. That is how you start getting a plaque to build up, and that is how you end up with heart disease. It has nothing to do with how much cholesterol is in your body, it has to do with what kind of cholesterol you're making. And that's why Dwight Eisenhower with cholesterol of 165 could develop heart disease. So let's look at what might be driving heart disease. We said it starts with inflammation. What causes inflammation? Three biggest sources. Smoking, elevated blood sugar, emotional stress. Sugar and refined carbohydrates will elevate your blood sugar. Dietary fat does not elevate your blood sugar. We know that heart disease may continue if small dense LDL shows up to repair the damage. So what kind of food in our diet would produce small dense LDL? Does anybody at this point want to raise their hand and say bacon and eggs? No? Sugar and refined carbohydrates are the foods that cause your body to produce small dense LDL. The people who told them a government committee it was sugar and white flour probably had it right all along. Now fortunately, after 40 years of blaming saturated fat, we're starting to see more research.